All right. What is up, world? I don't know what to call y'all. I'm going to keep calling y'all world, but I'm not only speaking to the world. I'm really trying to speak to those of y'all who are interested in World War II stuff, which probably should be the whole world, but it's not because World War II was, believe it or not, not the only event in human history. But hope you're doing well. We're back here with Eurofront. It's been about 12 days since I've uploaded my last video. And maybe some of you have already noticed, but my consistency in the video making process has been a little bit uh, stagnating there. And I promised myself I would be more consistent, uh, but here I am wrestling with this process of discipline, creativity, all that good stuff. And so I'm here to let you all know that um, I think I need to finish what, I'm, what I started and finish this video series. Um, but a few things I want to say before we actually do that. First of all, I want to turn on my cool little mouse light. There we go. I love this little blue color. Um, first thing I want to make a point of is, um, you know, I have a confession to make. I have a confession to make to y'all. And it is simply that I don't know about y'all and I would love some feedback on this one if you want to put any comments down below. Um, but after studying World War II for, I would probably say since middle school, you know, I don't know how the schooling system is in Europe. I, I imagine it's similar, but that's roughly the age of about, you know, 11, 12, 13 years of age. And I'm 28 years old now, so it's been about 15 years, give or take. And during that 15 year time window, I think I've been finding myself still doubting if World War II is something that I want to study further. And I think the reason why should be pretty obvious to most of y'all, but the truth is, as much as I love studying the, 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 the battles and the tanks and the combat and all these cool heroic battles that happen, um, part of me just can't help but notice how dark it all really is. And you really don't have to go any further than, say, the World War II channel made by Indy Nidell and his team. And effectively, um, you know, World War II, the truth about World War II and the truth about war is that it's a really dark subject. And I'm sure some of y'all have experienced this, but when you're playing a war game, could be a game like Eurofront, which we're about to jump into, could be any other World War II game that you get your hands on. At some point, I'm pretty sure some of y'all have experienced this. Please let me know if you have. But at some point, you just run into this thing of the game being too dang hard. And it's like, what the heck? This isn't fun anymore. This is literally just like painful. This is literally just a painful process. Why? Because war is hell. That's why. And any game that's trying to simulate it or, or try to replicate it in some way, you're eventually going to find yourself in a oh fuck situation. A situation that you don't want to be in. Like no one wants to be the losing player in any game, but when you're playing these games that often are very sweaty, very competitive, whether it's Metaphor, which is a game I play a lot. I used to play Red Orchestra 2, great first-person shooter. IL-2 Shnomovic, there's a great uh, flight simulator series. At some point, you find yourself in a situation where it's like, dang nabbit, this game is too hard. And it's not the game's fault. It's not the game's fault at all. It's the game, it's the fact that the game is showing I think, or at least hinting at some sort of truth to the real nature of war, which is that it's not fun. doesn't matter if you're on the winning side or losing side. You find yourself eventually having to deal with the grind of attrition, and you're going to have to take, take an L at some point. And so I'll tell you now, in my journey of studying World War II, there have been a few moments where I've kind of hit this strange, like, dark rock bottom. And, and come to think of it, I think a lot of my, a lot of the reason why I'm actually attracted to World War II in the first place, a lot of it has to do with a much darker part of my, called the id, you know, monster of the id, as I think Freud would say, or like just this deeper subconscious thing. And I think all of us, all of us gamers, all of us geeks, let's say, you know, who are interested in the subject of World War II, I think all of us at some point experience this. And 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 then. I know this as a fact because when you when I've played some of these multiplayer games, I see players rage quitting all the time, myself included. So there's something in that, folks. And um, I just want to let you all know that um, it's a real thing. It's real enough for, for, for it to demand a little bit more 
exploration, consideration, a little bit more self-awareness, you know, or, or like, let's try to, let's try to sh shine some light on this, on this matter, because it is a can of worms. And it's really frustrating speaking as a military historian, which is what I'm going to label, label myself as, who often finds themselves struggling to finish reading some of these books, because at some point, I'm either like, I'm just like, this is just too much for me. Um, so, so, Take, for example, when I've been studying uh, David Glantz's, um, uh, the, uh, his, one of his books um, that talks about the Battle of Smolensk, which was arguably the most critical battle of, of the invasion of Russia, more critical than the Battle of Stalingrad, perhaps, although debatable. Um, but it happened in 1941 during this, the high tide of the German invasion, the summer period. On the map here, it would be over here, Smolensk. And it, and it clearly I means Smolensk is a very historical city for Russia because it is kind of the gateway city to Moscow between Moscow and Europe. And so both sides had their eyes on Smolensk. You know, Soviet Stavka didn't want to lose it. Uh, German High Command obviously wanted to take it. Army Group Center wanted to take it, and all the, the main generals that were running that operation because they believed that if they could just take Moscow, they could defeat the Soviet Union, and then, you know, the whole government would essentially collapse. I think that's what they kind of had in mind. Sort of similar to what happened with, with the French in, in the year before, 1940. And I'll just tell you now, when you read up on these battles, first of all, a lot of the orders that these, these, these generals are giving don't make any fucking sense. But they're doing it because, you know, um, the war needs to be won. They're doing it because orders are orders, and you got to do what you got to do, even if... Reason would say, let's not attack. Let's hold off. Let's build up a. Let's let's give it like two more months. Let's build up a defensive line somewhere else, and and buy time. But that that is not the case on the Eastern Front. It is all about the attritional war on the Eastern Front for both sides. It's not just the Soviet meat grinder. Um, by 1943, 1944, the German army was getting was very much engaged in the attritional war with uh, Hitler's. Um, he had a name for them, but they're basically these like mini fortified towns that he would try to build up throughout the Eastern Front to slow down the Red Army advance. And I think it succeeded in part, but it came at a guaranteed defeat of battle, which is not common for the Prussian, you know, uh, uh, war culture that goes all the way back to the era of uh, Karl von Clausewitz, which very, very important military historian or, or just very important military uh, theorist, I guess. And, and, and something that I would want to get into in the future. But what I'm trying to say is I'm at, I'm at a loss, folks. Do I, after spending 15 years of studying the subject, I still have doubts as to whether or not I really want to keep doing this because I'm, I'm, I'm questioning, like, is it even good for my mental health? Is playing, are playing, is playing war games good for your mental health? Especially when in the back of our, back in all of our minds, we all kind of know what we're really doing here. We're just kind of imagining us as the as the field commanders or or the, or the generals in the war room. And, and chances are, if you believe in reincarnation and all that other stuff, you know, chances are maybe some of us were, you know, some sort of, you know, Genghis Khan, you know, emperor or, or, or you know, another Caesar or Napoleon, you know, that kind of stuff. And so, you know, obviously it's about the ego of man. You know, and, and speaking as a man, you know, we got we got big fucking egos. OK, and so it's important, I think, for us to just further unpack this a bit more. So I don't know. I don't know what what to say on this subject. But every time I play these games and every time I get into the, you know, some of the, the gaming communities, I can't help but but notice that part of the reason why some of these communities get a little toxic sometimes. And it's not just uh, it's not just unique to the World War Two games. But it's like Call of Duty. Call of Duty is like the the, the extreme of like toxicity, but um, or playing Halo or any of those any of those shooter games, any game that basically has some basic formula of mechanical violence. You know, I can't help but notice that sometimes it just feels like we just are trying to get something out of our system, like a like an anger, like a frustration. Maybe it's our day to day lives, something like that. It could be the woman in our lives. Don't get me started there. But in in essence. It's almost like we're trying to get something out of our system, and I'm wondering, is it really the healthiest way to do it? And so I don't know if you all felt that. I, I definitely find myself feeling that very much, and, and it frustrates me. Ironically, that gets me more frustrated than the gaming itself. It's this feeling of I'm just kind of being a sucker to my own emotional desire to just like channel this energy and this, 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 this kind of inner power energy, and I'm channeling it, 
and I, and I, I, I need to find somewhere to release the energy. And so I put it into the gaming, right? We, we, we go hard on the gaming. Excuse me. Excuse me if I got a little loud there. But we go hard on the gaming. Why? Because it's, it just seems to be such a safe environment, right, to kind of put all that energy. Um, but but is, it really, is it really beneficial? Is it really benefiting us? And, you know, obviously this is kind of different to my audience. You know, I'm pretty sure most of my audience are just gamers. And, I, and I, I'm pretty sure some of y'all are like, okay, shut up already. Get, let's get on with the game. Let's just blow some stuff up. Let's roll the dice. I get that, my friend. But understand that, like, why are we so, why are we so, dare I say, trigger happy in these games? You know, and what's going on there? And what are, what are we running away from? And I'm asking myself these questions, and I don't really have a clear answer. So I don't know if I am being called to, by the universe to, after spending 15 years, I mean, clearly I have some interest and I got all this information in my mind, you know, do, do I just toss it out the window? Do I just give up on this endeavor or do I keep pushing forward and, and, and try to achieve the blitzkrieg? I feel like, I almost feel like OKH, the Obra Commander does here that is trying to achieve a blitzkrieg in like 1944, you know, like, like, like they, did they not realize that the Allies have air power? Did they not realize that their tanks are not as good as the Allied tanks? Or, you know, they're res essentially tactically equivalent when you got T-34, 85s and 76 millimeter Shermans with jumbo armor facing off, you know, say the Panthers and Tigers that everybody loves, you know, and that are just really fat cats in my opinion. But anyways, the point I'm trying to make is that like, yeah, I feel like when it comes to studying military history, I'm kind of bl trying to blitzkrieg into the subject matter year after year after year and the results are not really showing the results are not really showing themselves as far as like it being my calling card to life and finding that life task that purpose in life that just goes far deeper than just any ordinary job and all that good stuff so you know that's where i'm at on the journey i hope this there's my introduction it's a little different than what you're used to but i i really want to make this point because it's affecting my my willpower and even my desire to to continue these sort of videos. Now, there's another reason why I have stopped making videos, and it's because let's be real, my attention span kind of ran short in this game just a little bit, because a I'm playing with myself, b because as we approach the harder parts of the game, I'm like I don't want to keep fighting this losing war, whether I'm playing as the Allies or the Axis. We're all, it all it all seems to be a lose lose, frankly, if you ask me. So that's another reason. Um, but the third reason, and I think this is the reason that y'all will actually appreciate the most, is because I've actually explored um, my own little experiment play sessions with um, you know playing the summer 1940 campaign, and I started new campaigns, um, which I know I'm not supposed to do as I'm playing this one campaign. But the truth is, my obsession about World War II. Uh, if since it's still relevant, is this obsession of like, why was it that Operation Barbarossa failed? Why was it that, you know, that um, they seem to be so close to victory yet so far, right? And of course, it's a whole can of worms. Um, but I, I decided like, I got to go all the way back to the Battle of France to understand why it failed. And in this game, I've, I've concluded that the only way for the Axis to really have a, any remote chance of success is if they take Malta, you know, and, and obviously that's that's kind of a ridiculous statement to say. But in this game that we've played, you know, we got very close to breaking through Alexandria, but we didn't have enough supply lines. And, and that's because Malta was this nasty porcupine in which I had to deal with uh, uh, basically this rule called uh, like supply interdiction or production interdiction. You know, it's one of the rules in the game. You know, we can go through the rule book, but basically it's like you got to roll the dice for the production in the... Uh, Mediterranean North African front and and as 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 we've been doing that clearly Rommel or whatever you know Africa Corps didn't have enough to push forward well the beautiful thing about playing in 1940 I think it was uh, this one here ye here ye um, I'm already I can pull up the file I just want to show you all real quick um, this is the I think I guess I'm in August right now I'm in a, uh, so this is a few months after the Battle of France and I just want to show you all for contrast just kind of what I've been doing. And I, and I had to play a few rounds before I actually got the formula down. Um, first of all, the Battle of France formula is super interesting. I got to say shout out to, uh, to Mark on this one because he did, he, he, he explained it like super well. 
and it was it was really fun playing that one time with him. But anyways, um, playing playing on the Easter front, uh, another story. But um, you know, this is obviously post Battle of France, and I just want to. Uh, oh man, is this the same? Is this the right file? What the heck? Why is Malta? Why is Malta not falling yet? Okay, you know what? I just okay. Well, maybe I think it's the next file then. Apparently, no. Okay, okay. I'm I'm, I'm back in. I'm in, I'm actually as far as January of 1941. Um, I'm pretty sure I did an Operation Barbarossa. Come to think of it, but anyways, I just want to show you the fall, the 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 file, rather. And you, there you can see the Malta is black here, right, because of the Axis occupation, and and you know we're kind of early on, but you know January 1941, the Africa Corps has yet to arrive. They arrive on the next month. But basically, like, you know, we took Malta. And then I started to build up for Operation Barbarossa. And then I guess I also want to show you where I'm at in that. Here's the file. This is now July of 1941. So we already started the invasion. And uh, so I got a bunch of files. I've been playing this game so many times. I've played so many, like, variants, like, again and again and again. I must have played this game about 100 times by now. Um, but here it is, you know, Greece, Greece is under occupation or the Axis are invading. You can see Rommel uh, advancing. There's all these nice units pushing on Alexandria. Uh, pretty much just doing what I was doing in the, in the play video that you've been seeing in this, in this particular video session. Um, and then I just also want to turn to uh, Operation Barbarossa. I was able to start this operation as early as uh, May of of 1941 i had no weather problems so i started I, I i basically moved the invasion date by six weeks um or technically i moved it up by seven weeks we started on may 1st rather than june 22nd and you can tell that by july 1941 you know we already uh pretty much uh it would have been a week into operation barbarossa and already we're kind of at the line where they were at um Probably around uh, August 1941, all but Smolensk, right? Um, but the German army is is advancing. A lot of their units are overstretched. The Soviets are trying to respond, right, in desperation. And I can continue this file. Um, but but I think there's still an interest in the subject um, for me personally. Um, but just how to uh, move forward with the subject matter is still something that I'm working on. And anyways, um, I just wanted to share some of that with you all. So... For the sake of this video series, and for the sake of just achieving a good peace of mind, I say let's just continue on with our 1944 now playthrough. Let's just play the game all the way until the end and call it a day or call it a week, month, you name it. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to switch now to the Allied Powers because I know they have the initiative. And... Um, you know, they're going to have the weather initiative, everything, pretty much, all but mud on the eastern front. And uh, right now we're pushing on Sardinia. We're trying to get the Italians to surrender. Italy has yet to surrender. It's February 1944. Um, and then uh, I think we're going to try to build up for an Operation Overlord of sorts. You know, i got some units stacked up here. Um, but I'll tell you now, I'm pretty sure the Axis already won the game. Pretty much, I'm pretty sure they already won the game. Um, but, you know, that's just me just what I'm presuming. We, we definitely pushed really aggressively with the Soviets um, here. It was Operation Red Dwarf that I called it, and it failed. Uh, they did not. So, I mean, they still have another month of good weather, but at this stage in the fighting, I'm pretty sure the Red Army units are pretty exhausted. They suffered notable casualties. You can see here, you know, two, two, two dead German units, three dead Russian units. Um, and I don't think the Red Army is actually going to be able to keep up their war of attrition, that kind of thing. Um, so let's let's go ahead and just push on this file. I'm going to say it now. There's a good chance that I actually don't finish this game. I, I, I may even rage quit right now at this point. I don't think I will. But we're just going to go ahead and keep trying because I guess I'm just getting really frustrated with, with some of this stuff. So anyways... Um, if, if you can relate to any of this, please let me know. So, Soviet production, let's, let's find out. Let's, let's see how that looks. Uh, we're still at 61. So, I'm going to start the file. And uh, we're in February. What's the game plan for the Red Army? I mean, clearly they want to take Smolensk, but it's still fortified. 
Uh, they haven't been able to do that. They haven't been able to take Ukraine just yet. They haven't even been able to retake my cop just yet. So pretty bad situation for the Red Army, if you ask me. Let's go ahead and build up these uh, HQs. Build up Stavka. I think I had another HQ here. Yep, let's build that up. That's already 40 production points. I only have 21 left. And I'm pretty sure I just want to build up these infantry here. You know, start building up the infantry. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What else? So that's seven build already. And um, what else? What else? What else? Build up this infantry. Um, so that's what? Eight, nine. Um, I want to build up this HQ too. So that's another, that's 19. I only have two left, two points left. And yeah, I mean, it's pretty clear that the, the Red Army is pretty exhausted from their from their drive over here. They were not able to break through. Um, there's still maybe a few more opportunities for offensive action. This is the last month of favorable weather. But the truth is, I mean, don't think the Red Army has enough firepower right now to really, you know, drop the hammer. I think actually I'm going to cancel this HQ build up this one so that I have a, at least a level 2 HQ ready to go. Since it's still a month of February, I know that we still have good weather, winter weather, and I think we can still achieve one more Soviet push. And I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to try to give the Soviets whatever I can. What I mean, I have barely any reserves anywhere. Again, so weird. I feel like just completely deprived with Red Army reserves. And it hasn't improved at all. Um, but... Um, We're going to see what we can do. Um, definitely want to pull out of this area because I know that there was an SS Panzer Corps over there. And we probably want to just pull back. Um, try to do that. Uh, but I also want to see if we can take Smolensk. I think Smolensk is the one area that we probably should push. Uh, maybe we shouldn't push over here. But this is such an awkward line to hold that if the Germans do decide to launch a, an offensive in 1944 against the Red Army, there's a good chance that they might succeed. So I think it's important that we keep the pressure on the on the on the German army, um, but as far as I can tell, I think these these formations here, more or less, need a break. They they they're just too exhausted. Um, yeah, maybe we need a break. Um, for now. Okay, so that's Soviet production. That's been done very easy. Uh, Western Allied production. They have a plenty surplus. Oh, also let me not forget the. Uh, yeah, we got some Allied lend lease. Let's do a dice roll for that. I mean, the Soviets get one extra production point for that. Um, so, yeah, I think I had, I said I had two left, right? Let's go ahead and just build up this one here. I, I may, have, may have miscounted there, but hey, no big deal. Um, all right. So now, Western Ally production. We're obviously going to still do another transfer. Um, so that's 10 production points sent over to the Soviets. Obviously, not all of it's going to arrive because of the U-boat menace. It's still there. The, the Axis still have a nice foothold at Scandinavia. They control the port of Narvik, and that's interfering with the supply lines. Um, in fact, we can't even move supplies this way because the Axis control Murmansk. Um, so I'm pretty sure in hindsight, um, if you control Murmansk and you control this route way down here in the south, Oh, no, nope, never mind. <laughs> the Tehran Rebellion succeeded. So we actually cannot send supplies neither to Tehran, neither via Persia, nor via, via Murmansk. So no Soviet land lease coming from the West Allied powers. And although, although technically there was a third route that would come from the United States across the Pacific Ocean. And I think it arrived in um, east, uh, basically the Soviet occupied region of Manchuria. And it would arrive that way and move across via rail all the way across Siberia to here. Um, but the developers have not like have essentially um, not factored that into the into the mechanic into the player controlled mechanics of the game. I think they just factored it in factored it in as automatic production. Um, anyways, Western LA production. What do we got? I think we got a lot. Eighty three, right? Now it's seventy three. I'm gonna build up this. Uh, Supreme Headquarter Allied Expeditionary Force. That's 10. Uh, another HQ, another HQ, another HQ. So that's already 40. Do I have any more HQs that I want to build up? No. 
I think my game plan right now is going to be to invade Sicily. As well as, as our, our current invasion of Sardinia. And the goal is to get Italy to surrender as soon as possible. Could happen this month. What else? Um, what else? What else? What else? So we have, what is it? I said 83. I think I spent uh, four HQs. So now we're at 43. The transfer, we're at 33 for the Western Allied Powers. And I quite literally have no more units to build up. That's insane. It's crazy how the Allies have had a surplus of production all of a sudden. Um, or maybe not all of a sudden. Maybe I just haven't really managed Allied advance very well. Uh, we do get some nice American units, though, for the month of February. And these units are clearly meant to be used for Operation Overlord. Clearly, clearly, clearly. I think I have a surplus of units over here in the Mediterranean front. Uh, let's go ahead and build up this HQ over here. I don't know what the heck it's doing way over there. Okay, I was moving it via port. I think I, I need to get its butt to move all the way to uh, Persia so we can squash this rebellion. Yeah, that's going to be the game plan. And so I'm going to have to get the British units to move that way. Um, but all right. Uh, I'm left with 28 production points surplus. Literally nothing to build, not even a militia units. Arab, all the Western Allied powers have plenty of tea and potato, it looks like, for the foreseeable future. And spam, I guess, because that's what they were getting a lot of um, in, uh, in World War II. So anyways, uh, that's that. Let's go ahead and uh, start the turn. I think uh, maybe I might be able to keep this video a little bit more brief because I love to talk so much. And frankly, um, sometimes I sometimes I think it's a little too long, personally. But you know, the videos just happen to be the way they are. So let's start the turn. Month of February. Um, it is going to be mud. I just realized it was mud. I, I think I think my Sardinian invasion was not. I didn't. I did not factor the weather in, did I? Hmm. I think I. I'm gonna, hold on. Let me just make sure. What well, is February? So we do do a dice roll for weather. All these markers still need to be there. Uh, where's the weather marker? It's over here. So I think I may have may have done that mistake too. Still learning about the game, but hey, let's go ahead and um, do the die roll. It is mud. Okay, so we got mud here. I'm pretty sure that mud applies to Sardinia. It applies to all of Italy, um, not just yeah. It applies to all of Italy. Um, we rolled a five, so let's see what that is for weather. And that's, uh, that's going to be a mud storm, you know, in the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. Um, no no weather problems on the eastern front. So what are we, what's the game plan here? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to activate Stavka. I'm also going to do an attack here, I think. I could try a blitz, but I'd rather not. I'm going to be just nice and steady here. I'm going to resend in my shock armies. And what I hope to see is a just a nasty breakthrough of some kind where we can really devastate the um, the German armies in this sector. So I'm actually, hold on, this, this unit's going to fall back up here. I'm going to move the cavalry this way because I just kind of feel like the central sector could be beefed up a bit. And then I think we're going to, hmm, I think I, think I still want to pin down this area just to keep the German reserve sort of preoccupied, but obviously we don't want to lose, we don't want to sustain heavy casualties against a nasty German counteroffensive, um, which would mean then that I probably should blitz. Um, dang nabbit. What if I, uh, hold on, I'm actually going to pull out this unit, and then uh, maybe we put a shock army in that way. Kind of an awkward spot. Yeah. I, also, to be fair, I think my Soviet strategy just was not, uh, it just wasn't sharp enough. Uh, wasn't sharp enough. The Axis, though, I mean, I, we've been kicking ass with the Axis. The Axis had incredible dice rolls, too, on the last few turns. So I, let's just make all that. Um, I really wouldn't want to lose another Red Army. army. Uh, even leaving behind a rear guard, it seems to be too much. Um, but I'm 
pretty sure I, I I don't know if we should just hold the line. I guess we should hold the line. And then there's the there's the concern of a nasty German counterattack. So I don't know what to do here. Um, kind of a hard, kind of a sticky situation, frankly. A little sticky. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not. I couldn't tell you. Um, anyways, I think we're just gonna move up. Just rotate these units. And um, I think we're gonna pull back. Uh, hmm. I think we're just gonna keep those red army units there for now. And if it gets really bad, we do pull out. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, probably gonna regret doing that, but let's make sure the Stavka. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, if we do have air support, I say we attack, man. If I have air support, let's attack. You know, I, th I think I just need a just a good lucky dice hit, apparently, to achieve a really serious breakthrough. Um, but let's try to attack everywhere. Let's, let's, let's be a little reckless like the Red Army actually was historically. Let's try to attack everywhere. So I'm going to attack. I'm going to say if I have two airstrikes, I'm going to use them, especially if we have like actual good firepower. So let's let's give that a go. Maybe I should blitz. Uh, I could blitz with the Baltic HQ, but that means that on the next turn, I will not be able to do anything more. But it does allow me to like rotate units in and out a little bit more easily. But let's just go ahead and attack. Um, I gotta say the last few turns were pretty badass. Uh, this this engagement here was quite a cool slugfest, but the, I think the Germans did come out on top. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna do that. I'm gonna move up this HQ over here. We'll leave it there, I think. Um, any other moves I would want to do, potentially? Um, hmm. Hard to say. We can pull this guy out, I think. That's one move. So that's one, two strategic moves. Um, what else? A few more. You know, these units are pretty uh, worn down here. Uh, one, two, let's see. Hmm. I just feel like the Soviets don't have enough units. We're not going to keep attacking over here. We're just a little too exhausted, frankly. So we're just going to hold off for now. I think we have enough units to defend against any sneaky German counterattack of any kind. But what I do want to do is I kind of want to rotate some of these units in and out. Especially since I'm attacking with three tank armies there. Uh, let's uh, put this mech unit in. I'm going to rotate out this guy tank army so that's one two three four right what was the fourth move oh, i did hold on one two three i could have sworn there was another move i did oh yeah four okay two more strategic moves left um three four uh what else let's move uh this hq back five put it somewhere a little safer and I got one more move left. One more move left. Uh, I could rotate another unit out. Maybe we should pull this guy out here. And I should be strong enough. These these tank armies should be strong enough to hold the line against the German counter attack. I hope. Um, but that's that. All right. So that's enough movement. I think. Let's go ahead and do the battle. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and deploy this HQ over here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to move up this tank core over here as well. And then let's pull out this infantry there. Okay. That's pretty good. All right. All right. So let's see how these battles go. At this point, you know, we're just going to go all in. See if the Soviets can succeed. If they don't, they don't. Um, and at this point, we're just going to call it an Axis victory. But we can still have some pretty cool battles. So let's do that. Um, oh, before I actually start the Soviet movements let's do the allied movements i'm going to activate this hq now it is disrupted because of the mud um so it does have our support though let's put an airstrike uh like over here i guess um i really i mean might as well do this invasion 
because um, you know, might as well because literally, you know, I, I have all these extra HQs. I don't even know how else to spend them. So let's let's make an invasion here. And um, maybe I can set up a beachhead. This is actually a good opportunity to set up a beachhead. It seems like that's what I'm being incentivized to do, especially given how, you know, everything else costs so much or so little, rather. Um, so, yeah, uh, we could even blitz, I think. I'm pretty sure you can't blitz during mud. Terrain effects, da, da, da. what about weather effects? I think you can bliss, it's just disrupted. You obviously don't want to blitz in mud, but I'm pretty sure you can still technically blitz, except it's disrupted. That's a good rule to find out about, so let's do that. Um, you know, another thing about these videos is that, um, you know, obviously going through the rule book is never really all that fun, right? So, anyways, you'll see here weather, 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 da da da, eastern front weather. I want to learn about mud weather. There's nothing that says about blitzing. It just says that they are disrupted. So we will blitz. Oops. We will blitz. Where is the uh, file? Now I got all these files open. Which one is it? Nope. 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 Yes. Okay. So we're going to move... Uh, this infantry um, here to uh, Licata, just to establish a, a beachhead. And then I'll go ahead and indicate another invasion site. Well, actually, we'll have this guy. Uh, yeah, no, we'll, we'll attack with just an, uh, this British unit here. And then on the next turn, we'll, we'll move up. That way we have more air support. I think it's an airstrike of three because technically it is the Mediterranean front, and the Mediterranean front has no weather problems. But once we go, once we shift over to you know even Sicily, we have mud problems. But I think for now we're good. Um, so then the second we're gonna have a second invasion site, and I'm gonna indicate it there at Licata, and that will be the game plan for the 21st Army Group apparently. And that should be plenty. Let's go ahead and put that airstrike marker here just so that we have a higher chance of success. And uh, there's really not many more moves I want to do. Uh, not many more places I, I think I can even attack, frankly. But we obviously are preparing for Operation Overlord. Um, I have one HQ there ready to go. One field HQ, rather. Plenty of ground units. Um, plenty of ground units. And uh, we will get another one in March. So that would be March... April, May, June. Yeah, by, by June, this HQ will be good enough for an invasion. I think we'll probably do two invasions of France and uh, just start overwhelming the French or, or Axis defenses in France um, while these two other HQs operate in the Mediterranean front as, as need be. So yeah, that's plenty. Let's start the battles. Um, we're going to start here attacking this port of Sassari. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> oh, bless me. All right, let's go ahead. Air strike. Two, three, no hits there. Um, air strike was a dud. They roll, no hits, no axis hits, and roll four, three. Uh, they do have double defense, so we did not succeed. Let's attack here at Olbia. You know, Italians there. Um, they do score a hit. Ouch. They roll three, no hits. Okay, so. The invasion of Sardinia, I thought it would be a lot faster, but these last axis uh, defenses are being quite annoying, aren't they? Invasion of Palermo, let's see how this goes. Oof, strong Italian unit. We'll start with the airstrike first, scoring two hits, very nice. Italians will roll, they do not succeed in repulsing. British will roll, and they did score, uh, oh actually I guess that was only one hit technically of the double defense oopsie daisies so the italians get one more roll we'll, we'll make this their that roll count uh so still no repulse uh one more dice for the british okay uh no hits all right so there, there it is um we can do 
Yeah, we'll go ahead and do the blitz phase over here. And we're just going to get this American unit at Likata. That way we have a beachhead supply path. Um, in fact, we even cut off this uh, Italian unit there. Very nice. Okay, and then we will deactivate this HQ. That's that. Uh, we can do another round of combat. So let's just do unsupported combat up here in the north. Attacking Sasari again. No hits. British and Americans roll. No hits. Uh, unsupported combat. We won't, we won't even bother attacking Olvia. Let's go ahead and do it. Fuck it. No hits. Roll. We would have needed, we would, we needed to score three sixes there because of the hill country and because you got double defense. But because it's mud and it's unsupported, it would be triple defense, right? Okay. Um, hopefully, for those of you who've been watching this series for, how you know, by now are familiar with that. Um, this is a tutorial series after all. It's just meant to show you all how the game looks and feels. And then, of course, you know, for those of you who are interested, buy the game and play the game. Um, all right. Now let's do the Soviets. Let's see how well the Soviets do. we got two battles up here uh, with some air support. We're starting up here. Germans have a strong defense because of that SS Panzer Corps. We'll start with the airstrike. No hits. Ouch. Uh, SS Panzer Corps will roll the three. They score two hits because they got the uh, uh, triple fire. And they do score some pretty nasty hits there. And then the German infantry will roll. They score no hits. Very nice. And now let's see what the Soviets can do. We have, uh, what is that, five double fire, four single fire. Let's see how it goes. And they only scored one hit there. Okay. So it's kind of a stalemate. But I think the Soviets have at least enough units here to at least hold off a German counteroffensive, which is good. Uh, we'll do the Battle of Smolensk now, see how it goes. Germans did rotate much more, many more units in there. Uh, we'll start with the airstrike. Ooh, very nice. Three. That's exactly what we needed, right? One, two, three. Nice. Germans will roll. This fortress unit has triple fire and triple defense. The triple fire, they score one hit, followed by the infantry. No hits. Uh, so they only scored one hit against our ground units. Very nice. I think the Soviets might achieve a breakthrough. It's all up to the Soviet ground units now. Let's get some good dice rolls. I'm counting 11 double fire dice, three single fire dice. Let's see how that goes. All right. We've got some pretty good hits there. One, two, three, four. We've got four hits. Four hits against the German army. Now I kind of wish I did blitz. Uh, but uh, one, you know, this, uh, yeah, these three, these three units are all going to take hits. Um, or I guess, I guess the other way to look at it is, I think it's this fortress unit. I, I forget the order of these fortress units. Like, which do they take the first hit or the last hits? Let's read up on that. Combat, combat. Da, 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 da. Nope, passed. Went too far. We're looking for these units here. Um, basically it talks about how these units can like uh, absorb hits yeah uh, they have triple fire defense which also protects smaller friendly units in combat when a fort unit is the largest unit in a battle it absorbs three hits before losing a step um, but equal strength units absorb hits until they are smaller upon which the next three hits applies to the fort got it so yeah the fortress unit it's only when it's the strongest unit will it will it protect so these, these guys do take hits. One, two, three, but then this guy's gonna absorb the last hit. There you go. All right, pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. Not bad for the Red Army there. Um, pretty impressive. So we are making progress on Smolensk. It's just really slow. Um, and that's just it for the Red Army. I don't plan on attacking anywhere else on this turn. Um, so now we can move on to the supply phase. Let's go ahead and set up that beachhead marker. This is the first beachhead we actually set up in the game. And it's this, this icon here basically acts as a supply source, basically a port. And it's going to supply this American unit as well as this Italian unit. Um, now, technically, this hex here is disputed. So technically, the Italians are still getting supplies from Messina. And until Messina falls, this unit is still in supplies. So I was wrong there about the supply situation for that unit. Um, because the unit here in Catania also influences this area to the north of it, northeast of it, northwest rather. So we're going to switch over now to the Axis. And um, let's see what they can do, what they want to do. 
uh, hide this HQ, hide these units. Um, the axis, basically, we decided to pull back the axis units very nicely to northern Italy. Pretty much got it all fortified. Got Yugoslavia pretty well fortified as well. I got a nice reserve here in Belgrade. The Allies decided to land in Greece. Or, you know, yeah, in Greece, um, you know, we can deploy our units to the south. So feeling pretty good about that. Um, these units are still in supplies. You know, they still got supply sources. Um, they're in limited supplies, but supplies nonetheless. And that's it. Um, I don't think the Axis really have many more moves to do. Um, now, we could, we, I think we got to do a die roll to see if the Italians will surrender. And technically, uh, no, this unit doesn't count. No, it's a restricted unit. So that unit does not count. Um, it does not. Um, yeah, it does not. All right, so what can we do? Hmm. I don't think there's anything I need to do on the western front. I think you know our, our defensive lines are still pretty good. Here on the eastern front, what is it that we want to do? Of course, our HQs here completely pooped. Oh, did I did I not do? Uh, I I skipped axis production, didn't I? Goodness gracious me, I forgot the axis production. Um, well, thankfully these battles haven't changed that much. Let's just do that real quick. Eighty-two production, uh, building up these HQs. I'm like, why are these HQs at level one? That seems a little too low. So we'll build up this HQ, one, two, three, four. That's four HQ builds. That's 40, I got another 42 left on the Eastern Front. Obviously building up these German units, one, two. Uh, yeah, let's build up these units, these uh, mountain units, those are five apiece, that's 10. So I'm at 14 right now that I've spent on ground units, 14, 18. 26 okay all those units are mostly level 3 26 put that at 30 I have 12 left um, definitely took some casualties here let's pull up this unit um, and also this unit and maybe this unit over here or maybe we'll build up we'll build up this oh actually no we'll cancel this build and I think I was going to probably build up this Panzer Corps at full strength. Might as well. Beefing up our line here as best we can. Oh, and these units could use more reinforcements as well. Oof. Uh, but no, we we're just going to skip out on that. Okay, and then the Western Front production is very strong for the Axis as well. Um, what is it? Western Front... According to this, according to my calculations, it's 66, very high for the axis. Uh, I'm, I'm in fact, I'm thinking like, is that too high? Is that just too high? Let me look. Let me look. If we look at the, uh, if we look at like the uh, historical setups, right, and you know, closing the ring, you know, or 1944 Anvil victory, like let's look at the axis production. On the western front, it's 55. Eastern front is 66. Yeah, that seems pretty reasonable. If I do the closing the ring, I mean, I'm seeing that the western front is only 41. Eastern front is 90. So, yeah, I couldn't tell you why the... Um, Eastern Front, why is, why is the production so dang high for the, uh, for the Axis? I guess they gained another 10. Um, yeah, I, I, may, I, may have, I may have even miscalculated the production, folks. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. But according to my calculations, I've, I've been pretty consistent. And, and this is something that I, I'm constantly wrestling with all the time. These, these, co these constant calculations. But we're just going to leave it at as it is. Um, and I'm just going to trust myself on this one. But uh, yeah, as far as 66 production, oh my gosh, that's so much. It's like too much, right? So much. I can build so many units with the Axis. 
And then we could build up these guys. Start transferring them over to the Eastern Front. You know, I'll build these two units in, I guess, over here. So that's already 12. Panzer Corps, that's 20. 28 that have been spent. 28. Um, cavalry, that's another six. So we're now at 34. 34, 34. Um, building up militia units because there's not much else to build up. I think I might even build up the Italian units. Let's build up these militia units. So now we're at 40. Such a surplus of units, huh? I have, what, 26 production points left. You know, we could even build up these Italian units. Uh, any more? No. No more Italian units to build up. I don't think I'm going to spend it on the Italians. No disrespect to the Italians. Oh, let's build up this HQ here. That's another 10. So I'm now at 50. I got 16 points left. Let's go ahead and build up this militia. There was another militia I could build up too, this guy here. So now we're at 46. Or I guess I'm at, f I guess I was 50, right? Um, now I have, oh, I have 10 left right now. Okay, I got it. Um, and then with 10 left, the uh, only unit I can see building up is maybe this fortress unit in Rome. Build that all, all the way up, and there we go. Okay. Now we can do the movement, axis movement. Uh, this unit, these units definitely got battered down. What we're going to do is a simple rotation. Move the Romanian unit there, this guy in here. Um, and I don't really have much more. You know, I can I can pull out a pull out a German unit. That's all I can really do. Um, you know, these units are still holding the line. Um, and then this guy, maybe move this guy in there, and we'll pull out a weaker German unit over here. So actually, this guy, so let's move him back over here. Okay, so we're, we're trying our best to just keep fresh units in there, but so we start making headway at Smolensk. Um, I could move up more reinforcements, but um, I think we're just going to pass for now. Um, now, while we are activated, might as well try a little s German counteroffensive here. Um, I think given how successful the Germans have been, I say we just go for it. It is a disrupted HQ because of the snow. Uh, we actually don't even have air support. We don't have much air support, don't we? We only have single fire air support. So do we attack? I say we attack. Let's give it a go. Uh, those German counterattacks have been really paying off, haven't they? Um, and then uh, as far as attacking anywhere else, I mean, we could attack over here, but I say we just hold off. Wait for this HQ to be built up to full strength before we do any of that. And then I think we're in overall pretty good shape otherwise. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead. Let's do this attack here and see how it goes. So we are going to counterattack east of Orsha with this SS Panzer Corps leading the way. And I'm going to start the airstrike. We do score a hit. Ooh, and that hit's going to go on the Soviet tank corps. The Soviets have four double fire and single fire, so we'll do that. Ooh, the Soviets score four hits. There we go. Ouch. That was pretty bad. One, two, three four okay now the germans are looking pretty bad we're going to roll two of the panzer corps they do nothing and then the infantry they do score one hit okay it's pretty relatively even exchange there both sides are pretty exhausted i don't think the soviets can still break through okay and just like that we'll stop the turn there for the german army and uh, we'll now move on to the next fortnight and continue on this campaign so i'm going to move switch over to the allies now and um, I think actually this time we're going to pass for the Red Army, which may not be a good idea. Maybe this is a good opportunity to keep the attack up and try to pin down as many German units as we can before they gain a production advantage. Um, or we actually wait um, and, and let, look our wounds and hope for good weather and then try to do one more Soviet blitz, see if we can make some gains. And I think that's probably the better option. Um, or maybe not. Um, over here, 
I think it's clear that we should we should keep on attacking. Um, but this HQ is at level one. I don't have any other HQ in the sector, so I'm not going to attack. And that was just clear. The only HQ I have this is Ukrainian HQ that I could use, but you know I, I say we just hold off and use it for a blitz on the next turn. Um, but once we blitz, we got to make sure that all these units are at full strength when we attack. Uh, maybe that's what it was. Maybe I just simply like was took too long to build up my units before I made moves. That could very well be a, a valid reason for why we haven't succeeded. Um, I'm going to go ahead and activate uh, this Africa uh, HQ. It has four supreme moves. And we're going to start moving some of these uh, British units over to Persia. So this guy's going to move via C. He's going to go uh, one two into the red sea that's two supreme moves into the red sea and then three we'll, we'll, be, we'll be able to get it all the way to uh karachi is that where i want to put it maybe not no no no. i think i actually want to put it not in karachi but all uh, but rather in these areas south of iraq uh, we'll put it in uh, Abadan right over here. Okay, that's good. And then I got one more move. Let's get ahead and get this HQ also moving via C to that port as well, presuming that it's a large port and I'm allowed to move two units into that. Nope, I can only move one unit via port there. What a bummer. So I guess we'll just put it in Basra instead. And the idea is we're going to move this HQ and this Western Defense Force unit and get it all the way to Tehran so that we can launch a good attack there. Um, I guess I could have... Yeah, I guess we could have gotten in there a little sooner, come to think of it. Um, so yeah, that's one set of moves. Um, and then the only other thing to do would be to activate this uh, HQ and maybe start shuffling around units, perhaps. Start getting my units in a better attack position, I would think. That was a one, two, three, four. And then we'll do like five. Oh man, there's just so many units here. Too many, too many units stacked up. So uh, hold on, I did one, one, I guess we'll go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, just like that. Okay. All right. So not 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 super fancy move. We're just moving, shifting units around, keeping the axis guessing as to what our plan of action is there. All that good fog of war stuff. Um, and then as far as battles. Well, I mean, I kind of want to keep attacking, but these HQs are already pretty worn down. I'm thinking maybe give it another turn, let the, let the HQs build up. We still have command range, and we have air support. Um, hmm. Okay, you know what? All those moves I did up there, we're going to make a few adjustments. I take it back, I take it back, I take it all back. We are going to go ahead and... Before I do all those fancy moves, let's actually uh, advance, let's exploit this beachhead here. I'm going to have this unit attack Catania, like so. That's one move. The next move I'm going to do is move this armored... Oh, that's one move. Let's go ahead and move this HQ into Palermo. Or near Palermo. Into uh, Licata. Um, I think I can only move one unit at a time. So the one, two, yeah. And that way we've actually put them completely out of supplies. That's good, one, two. I still have four more moves. So we can still go one, two, three. I guess we'll go like four, like that. Okay, there you go. All right, so now, now we are officially ready for an Operation Overlord whenever that happens. Oh, this guy was activated. And now we'll deactivate him, just like that. Awesome. Um, and then uh, we'll do an unsupported combat, attacking Catania. 
Um, you know what? Actually, let's have let's actually not move it to Catania. Let's actually have it move to Messina. Might as well. There's a free port to capture, and now, since we control all these bodies of water, we can actually put these units out of supplies. That's what I want to see. I want to be smart about how we do our operations. Um, so now, technically, this unit is out of supplies, and so is this unit. Well, actually, we have to do the dice roll to see if the ports will, if the if the ports will get intercepted or not. And so we can go to the player aid, look at the supply interdiction, uh, see supply moves. Um, this is the active player. So we have friendly naval supremacy. Um, so we roll, um, roll, we score a one, two, three, or four. These ports are going to be out of supplies. Um, so dice roll a one over here. Yep, that one's out of supplies. And then this guy needs to roll through the Ionian Sea. We roll one. It is also out of supplies. Okay. Just like that, these units are indeed out of supplies. Sweet. Okay, so we can now kind of roll over into the Axis turn. Don't think the Soviets are doing any more moves, right? No. The Soviets are going to pass this winter turn because of the limited combat value of their units. I don't know. Maybe we should try one more attack. Maybe we should. Even if our units are under strain. I only have, I don't have that many units to spare. No, I think we gotta wait. Okay, so now we're gonna roll back over to the axis and do the supply situation here. This unit's gonna take a loss. This unit was already a level one. It's gonna take a loss. I think it still can be it's still active, even though it's at level zero. Um, it's only until it engages in combat will it officially surrender. Um, but, but the Italians are on their way to losing some ports and also losing some units. I'm pretty sure by next turn we can actually um, get a victory. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for the Allied move. Uh, switching over to the Axis, uh, Italians, uh, you know, it's impossible for oh no actually now that the Italians lost two ports I'm pretty sure we got to now roll to see if Italy will surrender and um, it's, it's the war wariness rule and that has to do with the politics so it says section 16 the war and peace and let's look at the surrender and it says if the result is less than the satellites war wariness well the Italians have lost two ports so if the Allies score a roll of one the Italians would have surrendered, and they, they did not. They rolled three, so the Italians have not surrendered yet. No problemo. Um, okay, and now, uh, any other moves for the Axis? Uh, I don't think so. I think the Axis are going to pass this turn as well, and I think that should wrap up this video. So thank you so much for tuning in. World War II is a subject that has me somewhat divided internally because on, on one hand, there's so much value in understanding history and understanding where we've come from as a civilization, especially nowadays when people are stressing out about just like, I don't know, people are stressing out about little things, you know, families, um, you know, careers, life purpose. You know, back in the day, it was easy, right? Back in the day, you know, you could go to war with your with the nation you didn't like. And if it wasn't that, if you go further back in time, it would have been you know, you would have gone to war with the lions and bears or whatever other animal, you know, in, in the area or maybe some other tribe or something. Right. But now, as we are human beings living in the 21st century, more and more of us, since we don't, you know, our environments are very well sheltered. We got nice roofs over our heads. We got the Wi-Fi. We got the nice AC and the heating. You know, what do we do with our time? And I'll tell you now, I've been learning a lot that, uh, you know, comfort is its own form of misery. And so I think it's important. If there's any message I want to wrap this up on is that, you know, there's definitely a lot of a lot more of life that can be experienced when you're able to challenge yourself in certain ways. And so maybe World War II, studying World War II is going to be that challenge for me. Uh, I just can't tell you if it's, if it's a challenge worth doing or not. Um, but, you know, it's, it's definitely kept me curious for the last 15 years. There's still a lot of things I want to learn about it. And there's a lot of things I don't want to learn about it because the subject matter is really hot and heavy. 
um, then again, maybe that is the reason why I should study it because of the fact that like you don't want we don't want to forget our history, right? We don't want to forget our history. Otherwise, as the good old saying goes, history tends to repeat itself, right? So my message here is to any gamer historians out there, you know, I, I guess I just encourage you all myself included maybe we can we can do a better job of being more self-aware of the of our of our of the reasons why we get into these games and i think maybe we also can actually find a silver lining here and try to and try to realize that you know understanding these events as dark as they may be um, or as fun as they may be um, because obviously this board game is pretty fun but like holocaust mm, not so bright um you know there is there is something there is there is something to to understand a deeper insight about the world let's say so so who's to say who's to say um, thank you so much for tuning in I hope you enjoyed this video and my rambles about history and World War II and all this other stuff and also just enjoying the game itself I'll see y'all in another video um, we are in we're gonna now be in now officially March of 1944 so about uh, what is it, about 14 months away from the way the war ended historically. I think the game automatically ends by uh, by May 1945, and then we got to count the point system to see who won the game. But as of right now, you know, Fortress Europa still stands. And even Italy has not been breached. So, like I've said before, I think the Axis are going to win. But, you know, uh, at this point, but we can still have interesting battles. And who's to say? I mean... Uh, the Allies may be able to kick ass in 1944. We still got 1944 as the last major year to see if the Allies can turn the tide in the West while the Soviets try to grapple with their um, grapple against this very stubborn enemy that's holding into holding on to um, mostly Ukraine, but also places like Leningrad and even Mykop. So with that, peace.